You're listening to School Counseling Simplified, a podcast with easy to implement strategies for busy school counselors. Here's your host, Rachel Davis from Bright Futures Counseling. Hey listeners, let me let you in on a little secret. You don't have to stress about planning your class lessons, small groups, and individual sessions anymore. My school counseling membership program, Impact, is here to help. So, what do Impact members get? Monthly curriculum plans across all three tiers, SEL lessons, small groups, individual, and seasonal activities, step-by-step video implementation guides, bi-weekly Zoom coaching calls with me, and exclusive Facebook group community. This membership is designed for school counselors who want to deliver the best possible content to their students, but who also want to just press the easy button. You'll get access to monthly curriculum plans, resources, support, and community so you can deliver quality, engaging, life-changing counseling lessons to your kiddos. So what do you think? Are you ready to make an impact? Join today at stressfreeschoolcounseling.com slash impact. Hey there, happy Halloween, and thanks for listening to another episode of School Counseling Simplified. So I just love this time of year. October is one of my favorite months. Um, I just think it's so fun. I really like fall and pumpkins and Halloween. And it's like a fun holiday to celebrate because you can still get festive, but it doesn't have as much pressure um, as a lot of other holidays like Christmas and stuff. So I really like October. So I wanted to wrap it up with a seasonal inspired episode for you today. And I'm going to show you five ways that you can use Halloween candy buckets in school counseling. So when I say Halloween candy buckets, you can probably picture them. You know, they're like plastic, round, typically shape of a pumpkin, looks like a jack-o'-lantern. Now I've seen them, they're even just bucket shape, and they come in different colors, like pink and green and purple. But um, they're just fun, you know, they're created for trick-or-treating, for kids to put their candy in. But I have some ways that you can repurpose them and use them for school counseling activities. So if you already have some of these laying around, perfect. You don't need to buy anything. But if you want to pick some up at like Dollar Tree or I saw some recently at Target that were super inexpensive, of course, there's always Amazon. Um, I encourage you to order a couple or grab some today so you can try out these activities with your kiddos this week. Okay, so the first thing you can do is use them to identify and change negative thoughts. So basically, these buckets are great for sorting. I love to use um, sorting activities with students so they can cut out paper strips and sort them between two buckets. Um, I usually just have them sort them to piles on the table, but the buckets are just a fun, seasonal, festive way to do things. And anytime we can switch up an activity and make it really memorable, the kiddos are more likely to retain the information and really um, latch on to the concept. So how you could do this is... um, You're going to help students change their negative thoughts to positive thoughts by having them sort the statements into two different buckets. So first have them pair an old negative thought to its new positive counterpart. So for example, I never do anything right to everyone makes mistakes. So that's an example of the negative thought and then changing it to the positive thought. So you're going to first have them pair up the thoughts Then you're going to have them drop them into different buckets. Um, So put all the negative thoughts into one bucket and then all the positive thoughts into one bucket. These are like generic um, ones that you can come up with before and you can repurpose these with lots of different students. But if you're working with older kiddos, you could have them write some of their own negative thoughts and then change them right there on the spot with you. So if they're little guys, you can just have them practice matching it um, and then separating them into the different buckets. But if they're older students, you can dig a little deeper and say like, what are some, you know, negative thoughts, automatic negative thoughts that you have? And we can write them down together and then you can have them change them to a positive thoughts. That's really powerful. And then you can sort them into the two different buckets. The second activity you could do Also sorting is tattling versus reporting. So you can write common scenarios and phrases on strips of paper and then have the students decide if the person is tattling or if they are reporting. So you have one bucket for tattling, one bucket for reporting. Um, So for example, tattling would be Sarah's looking at her iPad instead of reading. And then reporting would be John hit Blaine at recess. So you just have some different scenarios and the kids have to decide, is this tattling or is this reporting? Now, you can do these bucket activities at the individual level. That's super easy, Um, especially that 
negative thought one, I think that's really powerful at the individual level. Um, but for like telling versus reporting, I think this one would be really fun at a whole class level. So you could do a class lesson, have your buckets in the front, and then have the kids get up. You know, it's always good to get them up and moving. So have the students stand up and then walk to sort the buckets. Um, and obviously this would work great in a small group as well. Okay, the third one, growth mindset versus fixed mindset. So similar to the negative thoughts activity, you're going to have students sort growth mindset and fixed mindset into two different buckets. And then with the older kiddos, again, you can have them identify an, their own fixed mindsets. Um, so get really reflective of them. So a fixed mindset is something like, if something's challenging, I should give up. And then a growth mindset would say, I'll try again and ask for help. So you're going to have the different paper strips and then they're going to sort them. Put all the growth mindset into this bucket and all the fixed into this bucket. Um, and again, you could have them pair the two like you did um, with the negative thoughts. Okay, for the fourth one, size of the problem. So this one's fun. This one's not just sorting into two buckets. You're actually going to have five buckets. So you could do tiny, small, medium, big, and huge. Or if you want to simplify it a little bit, you could just use three buckets, small, medium, and big. Um, now, if you can actually find the bucket sizes, that would be rad. But if they're all the same size, um, you can just label them with the different um, sizes. So you just get a piece of tape or write on there, small, you know, small problem, big problem. And some examples of this would be you forgot today was dress up day at school. That would be a small problem. A medium problem is something like your best friend doesn't want to play with you anymore. And a big problem would be your parents are getting a divorce. So size the problem. I just love um, teaching that to kiddos because it really helps them frame the size of their problem, their appropriate reaction, and how they can solve their problem. So, of course, you're going to, you know what to do. You're the counselor. You're going to have all these juicy follow-up conversations. So, you know, ask them if they've had a similar problem. Ask them what they would do to solve the problem. Ask them what they think an appropriate reaction would be. So the sorting into the buckets is just kind of like a fun um, visual starting point, something tangible they can do to really start these deeper conversations. Because if you just have a student sit down at the table and you say, hey, tell me about a problem you had, the size of it, and what you could do differently or how you would solve it, they're like, uh... But if you get them thinking and moving and chatting a little bit, then you can really start to have those deeper conversations. And finally, my last one for you, you probably guessed it because I love this topic, self-regulation. So you can have students practice self-regulation by sorting feelings and behaviors into buckets. So for this one, it is important on the colors of the buckets. So try to find them that are green, blue, yellow, and red because those are those zones colors. Um, and then you would have different feelings, so like sad, nervous, calm, excited, angry, scared, and they would drop, um, you know, those papers into the different buckets, or you could have um, the behaviors as well, so like kicking or punching, those would probably go with the angry, with the red, um, or maybe crying would go with the blue, with the sad. This one's great on a one-on-one -on -one because you can really dive deeper um, into the conversation. So maybe for, maybe they put kicking in the sad bucket instead of kicking with the angry bucket. And you're like, oh, you kick when you're sad. So there's not really a right or wrong answer here. I mean, these are just their feelings and their behaviors. So it's a really cool starting point to have some deeper conversations. Because these are pumpkin buckets, a fun thing you can do is um, cut out like the shape of a seed, like a pumpkin seed, instead of just a strip of paper. You can do all of these on little pumpkin seeds, and then they can do like a seed sort and put the seeds into the different buckets. Okay, guys, I hope that was fun. I hope you tried that out this week. Um, you know, pick up some little buckets and then get to seed sorting with your kids. If you do it, I would love to see photos. So please tag me on Instagram at Bright Futures Counseling so I can check it out um, and share them so other counselors can get inspired as well. Okay, guys, I hope you have an awesome into your October and I will talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to School Counseling Simplified. You can find the links from today's episode in the show notes. If you'd like to connect with Rachel, she's on Instagram and Teachers Pay Teachers at Bright Futures Counseling. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss any episodes of School Counseling Simplified. 
talk to you next week. 